protracted conflict in Somalia took its toll on the Somali people, many of them having grown up in a war-torn society without the benefits of regular schooling and the fundamental needs of security, peace and human rights. Somalia is now on the path to prosperity. The country is reasserting its sovereignty and taking both ownership and responsibility for its future. In the reconstruction process of Somalia, the adoption of the Somali New Deal Compact that was signed in September 2013 marked a significant milestone. The Somali Compact has provided political, security and developmental architecture that helped frame the future relations between Somalia, its people and the international community. The New Deal Compact came to an end in 2016 and Somalia's way forward will be guided by a newly developed National Development Plan. When we talk about the peace deal, it's important to note that the new compact deal has brought two key important aspects, that is accountability when a project is being launched. The second one is that the federal government and the international community has come together and bring mutual accountability in fostering peace in the country. We needed a development agenda that we can work with our international partners as well as the Somali people. It meant to address the fundamental development gaps in Somalia and to organize international assistance uh, to Somalia through a common platform where international donors as well as the Somali government could work together in a concerted effort to roll out development programs to work in the areas of security, justice, public financial management, revenue, uh, social services such as health and education. It's a very comprehensive program. The conference identified five peace building and state building goals, PSGs. Among them, inclusive politics, security and rule of law, justice, economic foundations, revenue and services. The New Deal Compact has foreseen the establishment of an inclusive coordination arrangement where government, civil society and the international partners jointly have discussed the priorities and how to tackle them. The Aid Coordination Unit was established to manage the coordination arrangements and the related meetings and workshops. The role of the Coordination Unit is to fulfill the mandate of the Compact Agreement. Our role is simply to implement the Compact Deal. Our work doesn't involve any decision-making and the principal role of the Coordination Unit is to fully see the Compact Peace in place. It involves both sides, that is, the federal government and the international community. The biggest achievement so far is that we have done some outreach programs, including awareness in the rural areas, explaining the importance of the compact deal. With financing through the UNDP, a number of aid coordination structures, which operated both at the political and the technical level, were set up, namely the Somalia Development and Reconstruction Facility, SDRF, Steering Committee, which holds monthly meetings to review progress and approve individual projects and programs. The High Level Partnership Forum, HLPF, which holds meetings twice a year to set high-level objectives. The Multi-Partner Trust Funds, MPTF, which finances projects upon approval by the SDRF Steering Committee and the PSG working and sub-working groups. The PSG team that I lead is called PSG4 or Economic Foundation and is supported by DFID UK, Danida Denmark, USAID and CEDA Sweden. And I take this opportunity to thank them first for their contribution. The role of this group is to build the nation in various capacities that includes infrastructure, productive structures and youth employment, resilience. So the three have different roles and each has a representative from donor community and federal government. The first plan of the project endorsed by the PSG include empowering the youth by providing them with education and employment. It's meant to fast-track employment to the youth. If you check out the population of Somali, the youth are the majority, and it's about maintaining peace. The project about resilience is widespread, 
and is meant to foster peace and its spread across, from farmers to rural areas and nationwide, and its most crucial one and a key foundation of the PSG. SDRF is among the structures that we contracted. The first structure is called PSG or working groups. Second is the SDRF, where all the projects are approved. And thirdly, after six months, we call a high-level partnership forum where the federal government, UN agencies and international community can meet. Through capacity building supported by the UNDP, Somalia has registered impressive outcomes in the implementation of the New Deal Compact Goals which is set to expire in 2016. In the last meeting of heads of states that was held in Istanbul, we discussed development that was in place and how to improve on it. Other discussions were focusing on how to move our country forward with the help of the international community as well as approve proposals and projects of the PSG working groups in the country. Some of the things that we agreed on are to establish new states which are Jubaland, Hirshabele, Southwest and Galmudug states. Those are the major things that we have done so far. To complement and sustain the demonstrable progress made over the past three years under the New Deal Compact for Somalia. The federal government of Somalia has developed a national development plan. For the first time in 30 years, we have been able to articulate our own development priorities and our development agenda, which came uh, after a very long, sustained and very robust consultations with communities all across the country. Also consultations with federal member states, with the private sector, with the civil society, to then uh, have this uh, finalized document that clearly uh, for the first time makes it very clear what are our development priorities. That is something that Somalis uh, are proud of because it came from Somalis and it's designed for Somalis. Key priorities are similar, inclusive politics, uh, reform of the uh, security sector reform, uh, uh, justice uh, reform, uh, constitution, and various other uh, development priorities. For example, there's a lot of infrastructure development uh, priorities within the development plan includes roads and ports. It also includes energy, renewable energy, and also the banking sector, development of our banking sector. And there is a, a, a chapter on resilience, which deals with uh, things like IDPs, the internally displaced people. 11% of our population is displaced inside Somalia. That's a huge number. And we have a program now in the development plan to address their fundamental problems. Within the resilience, we have uh, programs for the youth, uh, youth employment, uh, anti-illegal uh, uh, migration. There's so much illegal migration out of Somalia. The flight of young people is quite stunning, actually. So we now have programs to ensure that there are uh, programs and projects inside Somalia so that our youth don't need to go outside of the country. So it is a very comprehensive document. Substantial progress has been made and the Somalis are hopeful that the full implementation of the New Deal Compact and the goals of the National Development Plan signals a new dawn of peace and stability for Somalia.